Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Black Book Show. I'm your host, McConnell Sankofa, author of the book, The Rise of Rastafari, Resistance, Redemption, and Repatriation, and also Life in Gambia, the Smiling Coast of Africa, as well as being the host of the Black Book Show, of course. Today, I have a very special guest. He is a multi-award winning author, as well as a book publisher. I'm speaking about Tolu A. Akinyemi, the roaring lion of Newcastle. So let's start by welcoming our guest, Tolu, it's great to have you here on the Black Book Show. Oh, thank you, Makoden, for having me on the Black Book Show. And shout out to you for all that you do for Black literature, promote, promoting Black literature across the world. And I think it's really, it's greatly, it's greatly appreciated because the Black Book Show is now a formidable home for the expansion of Black literature across the world. So great job on that. And yeah, it's always a delight to be part, part of the Black Book Show. Thank you. Well, Tolu has written multiple books, 14 books he's published in total so far. He's also got five upcoming books that are scheduled to be published. Uh, but today we're going to be concentrating specifically on the children's books that he's written. Tolu's children's books titles are I Wear Confidence Like, I Wear Self Confidence Like a Second Skin, and I Am Not a Troublemaker. I'm going to begin with speaking about Tolu's book, I Wear Self-Confidence Like a Second Skin. Tolu, can you please give me a summary about the book? Yeah, so I Wear Self-Confidence Like a Second Skin was written basically for young people because self-confidence is something that is quite important. It's, a, it's an important attribute that young people, everyone should have. But by writing this for young people, I, I'm I aim to like, I want young people to develop confidence in themselves, in their abilities, to believe in themselves, to be proud of themselves, because generally having self-confidence is a lifelong skill. Look at us in conversation right now. It takes confidence to communicate your ideas to the world. It takes confidence and self-confidence to believe in yourself to that stage where you are happy to pull out a book to be vulnerable. So the old essence of writing, I wear self-confidence like a second skin is to help young people, to teach them to stand up for themselves, to speak out and to be brave enough to be like, just to have that bravery in themselves because in everything we do in life, we need self-confidence to achieve our goals, to aim for the very best. So basically, the whole idea how I wear self confidence came about was just the fact that, as a as a parent to two young children, we always had these conversations around the house and you know on happenings in school, and I kept on like motivating them to be confident in themselves, to have self confidence, to ask questions in class if things are not right. They should challenge things they feel are not right and to always speak out and stand up for themselves. So I think that was how this children's book was bettered. And I believe that self-confidence is like an attribute that we should, everyone should have, but we have to develop this skill from a very young age. Wow, it sounds like a very, very interesting book. I'm just going to read a couple of reviews of the book. One reviewer on NetGallery says, wonderful story about learning to be confident and the importance of the friends and family around you. It was a lot of fun to read and the children really enjoyed it. I believe the message is such a great one that should be shared with children growing up. I've also got another review um, of your book, I Wear Self-Confidence Like a Second Skin. And this reviewer says, a very lovely written book, perfect for children at school age to learn about respect and how to treat each other. I love the moral of the story, definitely uh, one for the bookshelf. Tulu, I just want you to state now, in that last review, the person said, uh, perfect for children at school age. Could you just clarify the age group um, that the book is aimed at? Yeah, so basically the, the book is aimed at age four to eight. That's the principal age, age bracket that the book is aimed at, yeah. Okay. And how has the book been received? Have you, I don't know if you've done any lectures in schools, have you done any talks that are maybe not necessarily in school, but any events to, to, to children? Um, and how, how has the general book been received in general? 
Yeah, the book has been received quite well. I've written to, I've written to schools, you know, in, in the in the region, in, in the in the northeast region in the UK, and just to introduce my, myself and and the new books to, to to schools to the local schools in the area, and the reception has been great. I have had orders from libraries across the UK as well, and the feedback has been really good. And I've also had like personal feedback from some air teachers who, who, got, who, who got the books as well. And the feedback from them has also been splend, has also been splendid as well. So I think in terms of reception, everyone feels like even in the marketplace as well, I've had a lot of you know, people adding it to their libraries because they feel like it's a vital addition. Uh, Self-confidence is an important topic and issue that we should discuss from time to time. And where is that book available? If someone wants to get a copy of the book, um, is there a website that they can go on to purchase it? Yeah, so basically they can purchase the book from Rovinite. They can, that's Rovinite in Nigeria, but basically the UK, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, bookshop.org. And, you know, so on the rovinlionnewcastle.com, and tolutolulu.com as well. Tolu, let's now go on to talk about your second children's book. Please give us a summary of your book, I Am Not a Troublemaker. Yeah, so I'm Not a Troublemaker is also another children's book aimed at the age of a children between four to eight as well. And it's also a book that aims to issues around self-esteem and self-confidence for young people. In this situation, um, we have a young boy, Chadwick, who, who just changed schools and there are issues around adaptation to the new school. But in the eyes of the teacher, there was this perception around him being a troublemaker. So basically the book is just to understand that young children also have challenges, especially when they move from one school to the other. And, you know, it doesn't really mean that they are troublesome. It could just be an issue around settling in from their old environment to their new environment. So the summary of the book is, the young boy has come into the school and they, he had this level of being a troublemaker. So it was just around would that label will it stick or will it be able to wipe off that label of being a troublemaker? So I think it's the old moral of the story is just to understand the young people and also understand that they have feelings, they have challenges, especially when they have to change schools, they have to move into new environments, and it's just the duty of parents, teachers, and older people around them to assist them, to help them to like, you know, adapt into their new environment. And I mean, both of your books, they seem to feature, I mean, are very much about self-confidence and self-esteem. So why is self-confidence and self-esteem important for young children um, and everyone in general? But I want to particularly focus on young children because, I mean, your books are catered towards young children. Yeah, like I, like I mentioned before, for young people, like, it's very important for, like, having great self-esteem helps them to, like, believe in themselves which is like very, very important. And also self-confidence is like a lifelong skill that everyone needs to have. And in terms of self-esteem, we need to like teach young people to always appreciate themselves and also to have a sense of value and worth as well. So I think that that's a very important thing for young people to help them to build their self-esteem. And we should, is it also, our duty to like teach our young people to like celebrate their achievements and also to stand up for themselves. So I see that as like something that is quite like important attributes that young people need to have. They need to have that sense of what 
before anybody, before you want other people to love you, like I always tell my daughter, you need to love yourself. So don't cry and say, people don't love me. You need to show that love. You need to love yourself because that is how you build self-confidence and esteem. Because when you lack self-esteem, that is when you are looking for validation around. You want people to love me. You want people to validate what you do. And even as writers, as speakers, and, you know, having that, appreciating that, putting that, believing in yourself, put your self-confidence and having that sense of value and worth is really good. They are really good skill sets, even as, as adults that we are. You go to a venue to speak to people. If you don't have that confidence and that self-esteem that you can do it, you, you might actually flounder in your delivery. So I think it's quite important that we build up our young children to have self-confidence from a very young age and also to engage them to build up their self-esteem, celebrating their little achievements and not like, because when we downgrade those achievements as if they don't matter, then it could actually affect them and affect their view about life as well. Yeah, I think um, I very much agree with what you said. I think in terms of like building certainly self-confidence, I mean, like what we're doing, we're both authors, but what you're doing is great children's book where people also can see reflection of characters that look like themselves. Um, I think that also helps with building up a person's self-confidence and, and indeed racial self-esteem, um, such as the books like my, that I've written, such as The Rise of Rastafari, right? And other books that focus on that Black consciousness. So I think both of us are, are, are doing really, really good works. And I just want to now actually state a famous quote from a, a great Pan-Africanist, the Honourable Marcus Messiah Garvey, because we're talking about self-confidence and he's always been um, an activist that's advocated, you know, for people of African heritage to be to be a, to be proud of self and something that he said is if you haven't confidence if you haven't confidence in self you are twice defeated in the race of life with confidence you have won even before you have started right so now i just want to um, ask you Tolu, why did you choose to be a voice on self-confidence and self-esteem amongst young children yeah well i think the reason why i actually chose to be like a voice on self-esteem and self-confidence is because I believe I know the impact of literature and growing up as well I've always been invested in in in, in the liter in literature in reading and in writing as well and I know how literature can go on to to influence people and their life choices as well so being a being a, a writer who who writes to like help young children build up their self-confidence and self-esteem has always been something I've wanted to do like for a very long time. So not just only on topics around self-confidence, self-esteem, but just general values that could help to build young people up. I've always been interested in, in subject area, subject matters like that. So but I feel like through literature, young people can come to a realization, come to and awareness as well. And also, maybe not just leaving it to literature alone, these books are, could be could become useful to kids that can help to begin these conversations that is helping parents introduce these topics to their young children, to, to their children as well. So these books would actually be like a great way to start these conversations and see how they can overcome these challenges surrounding self-confidence and self-esteem. So I just touched on it briefly a little bit earlier when I was talking about, you know, it's important, particularly for, for children of African heritage to see reflections of people that look like themselves in, in books. So now, how do we plug the gap of the, the, the lack of or inadequacy of literature with black characters in the current marketplace? Because there's definitely a lack of it. How, do, how can that possibly I mean, we come to some kind of solution. Yeah, so shout out to every Black author around the world and everyone watching this as well. So this is like an open call for you out there, for you out there as well to, you know, get involved. So I think it's just to challenge people to like get involved and, you know, let's do more for our culture. It shouldn't just be about 
you know, writing books to suit popular culture, where it should be all of, and not just about profit alone, but what, what are you willing to do for, for the black community as well? So I would just say it's, it's, a, it, it's just for us to get involved. More, more authors, more black authors should get involved in helping like have, you know, a, a, like, like more black authors should get involved in helping to build this, you know, this literature pool for where black children can also see like characters that look like themselves. And I think the funny thing about my, the two children's, the two books I, I just recently released last year, the children's books, even though they are all black characters, but I see a lot of white people buying the books as well. So it's not just like, even though they're black character, black characters, it's also a joy in terms of the diversity in the world today, whereby white people are growing up and they can also relate to black characters in books because it also helps them to see the other side of life as well. Because when all the books they've been used and uh, they've been accustomed to throughout their life is, you know, our books like that with white characters and all of that, then that is where we have a society that is kind of broken where people are racist to, to you know to towards other races because they've just been used to seeing something which they believe should always be what they should see. But when we open them to all these types of literature as well, it helps to like it helps society as well, you know, just to see that, you know, uh, uh, it helps society on the, in, in the long run as well. So I would just call on other black authors as well, get involved because that is the only way we can increase the number of books, children's books with black characters in them. Yeah, I understand what you said as well, that uh, obviously your main target is primarily like um, young young children, black, um, young, young black children, but you're not excluding, you're saying that obviously, you're not limiting yourself, you're not saying that you're not exclusively a black author, and I think that's important as well, that yeah, other people, people of other backgrounds can also read your book as well, yeah? Uh, yeah, it, uh, just, just to, sorry, not to call you short, sure. yeah, so basically, the, the books are not just for black, not just for black children as well. They are just they are, they are for everyone, and at least from the feedback we've seen as well, self confidence is an is an issue that cuts across races and is not limited to you know black children. But just the fact that it there are books with black characters does not make it does not exclude does not make it you know does not exclude other people. You get where, you get where I'm coming from. Yeah, you understand. I mean, that's what I was yeah, trying so, to get to, what you yeah. said it, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, Tulu, I know you are Nigerian. You're currently based in Newcastle. Um, I just want to ask that internationally, whether you've done anything for your children's books, whether in terms of um, how maybe in Nigeria, where they're available, any kind of, like, um, promotion that you've done in Nigeria. I was, it could be other places internationally, but the reason I mentioned Nigeria because you mentioned earlier a website in Nigeria when when I think I spoke to you about how where you could get your book where it's available. And I know obviously you being a Nigerian based here in the UK, you have links there because that was where you was born and where you're from. So um, how is your books? Is it is it getting is it being circulated in in Nigeria? Maybe you could talk more about that. Yeah, so the books are in circulation in Nigeria and they are doing quite all right. I've not actually had any auto events down there in Nigeria yet because I've not I've not traveled down yet, but I hope to have you know auto events, hopefully, if not this year, then next year, because I, I still have another children's book forthcoming sometimes in July. So I will just it will just be a case of doing events around all the all the all the newly released books at the same time. Okay, so what events though in UK? Have you got any upcoming events here in, in, in the UK that you're you're planning to do? Yeah, I think my my next event is gonna be the Black Books webinar. <laughs> 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 yeah, so at the, at the moment there are no upcoming events, but uh, I'm actually working towards having like a book reading event later in the year. And yeah, so just to read from some of the new books that, that just been released. Well, apart from that, the events just come in, they come in when they come in. So at the moment, there's nothing in the diary at the moment. Okay. And um, obviously you've written 14 books. I mentioned at the start of the show, you've written 14 books. You've got five up and upcoming books. 
Um, are those five books? I mean, are they, I take it there, there's some children's books that are coming out of those, or I'm just wondering. Yeah, so there's the children's book that will be out in July 2022. On the 29th of July, that's titled If You Have to Be Anything, Be Kind. So that's the title of the children's book. Then the other genres are essays and poetry as well. Okay. I'm just going to ask now, is there any, like, you're a children's author, is there anything maybe that you would like to possibly share um, like maybe any tips or advice that you would give for like an inspiring author that's, that's maybe writing their first book or that's still learn, you know, learning the ropes? Because obviously you're well experienced in the amount of books that you've written in general, but, but also in the children's book that what we're concentrating on today. Yeah, so I think general advice would just be for you to make it relatable, come down to the, come down to the level of the children, use words that they can relate with, words that they can understand as well. And also ensure that uh, the, uh, the, the books or the book you are releasing in that genre is like properly, very well written, very well edited as well. And if you can make it come alive with great illustrations, illustrations tends to like, because children are generally imaginative, uh, so, you know, illustrations helps to tickle their imagination and helps to bring the story, make the story come alive. So I, I think that would be a great, a great way to, you know, to go about it and make it relevant to the age bracket that you are writing the book for. So if you are writing the book for age four to eight, it shouldn't be ambiguous, make it like easy, easy to assess for them, easy accessibility ease of language and easy to understand as well. It's been a, it's been a great conversation with Tolu. Tolu A. Akinyemi uh, is the author of multiple books and he's the author of the children's books titles, I Wear Self-Confidence Like a Second Skin and I Am Not a Troublemaker. We're drawing a close now to this discussion. Uh, just before we draw to the close, I was gonna ask you Tolu, do you have any last comments or anything that you just may want to say? Yeah, thank you for having me on, on the Black Books show. And it's always a privilege talking to you. And yeah, so, and for anyone who would like to get a copy of the books, I I am not a troublemaker. And I wear self confidence like a second skin. You can get your copy on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and everywhere where books are sold. Thank you very much. And finally, before we go, um, I just want to, to thank you for uh, coming on and also please share your social media links, uh, website, contact information that you wish to share for those who may want to get in contact with you directly. Yeah, so uh, my publisher or publishing website is theworrylionnewcastle.com and my personal website is tolutolulu.com and toluakiemi.com. You can find me on Instagram at Tolu Toludo. I'm on Twitter at Tolu Akinyemi and Tolu Toludo. And I'm on Facebook at Tolu A Akinyemi. So thank you so much for listening and catch you again soon. Rawr! Well, that's it for this segment of the Black Book Show. Thanks for joining us, Tolu, and good luck, good luck with your books in the future. This has been another edition of the Black Book Show. Thank you. Bye.